wrap up our sort of integrative sciences. Um, we have Julia, who is in Dr. Gabe Morris. Stay over there. Or do you want to switch seats? I'm okay. Okay. There we go. 
So let's discuss some techniques. That's me right there um, injecting. I counted it. We did about 400 worms each, I think, yeah, with the dilutions and everything we did. So that was a process of about three days kind of repeating and repeating and repeating. And um, this is a visual representation of how exactly like they look and why we use um, Galeria worms is because you can like visually see how they are affected by a sample. So um, one of the techniques I learned is creating an immunity model and then also injecting um, those worms and kind of learning how to use the machine that um, regulates how much is put into these worms. Um, yeah, that's just me torturing them. So, yeah. <laughs> so they just basically, it's, it's very simple what they have. Um, hemolymph, which has, I, I believe, proteins in it that produce melanin in response to immune reaction. So they actually physically turn brown and then eventually die. And we injected all the worms and then kept track of them for about four, three to five days, depending on when we really did the experiment. And um, we had a lot of data coming from that, so that was really good. And then another one is colony morphology. So a lot of the bacteria that we sampled on campus, we didn't really know what it was, and we won't know what it is until we do um, genetic sampling, just to be super exact about it. But a first step is, of course, looking at it through a dissecting microscope and looking at um, shape, growth rate, color, texture, and the preferred medium, because those are all very specific to the species. And so um, I was taking a bunch of notes on like using that microscope, looking at how it looks, how is it different from other colonies, and that was kind of the first step to identifying which species we were really interested in or that look very unique that you wouldn't find everywhere. And then those species, we did overnight cultures and then would inject, um, actually we did um, streaking first to isolate single colonies and then we would inject the worms and see what kind of reaction they had, whether those samples had any pathogenic potential. Yeah. So day in the life, kind of talking about strong, um, research components first. So I would come to lab about 10 to five and we had a break, but that was kind of like you would come in if you had something to do. And it was also kind of individual, so you were responsible for your own experiment, getting that done, coming in at time. And a lot of the things were like time dependent, since it's biology, you're observing life, things that grow. And so it was kind of a matter of coordinating with teammates and also Riley kind of looking at when we come in, who does what. So that was really nice also because it, it was like a matter of being trusted with that responsibility and also just that, what's it called? Yeah, responsibility, yeah. And then also what was cool was that we had new tasks every day, even though sometimes we would have to repeat things to make sure they are replicable and that we had valid data. It was still something new every single day. And the most we did maybe two or three days that we would repeat something, but then we would also do growth essays. And it was just really fun to kind of practice techniques while also producing real data. Um, and then something unique, um, what I really liked is that even though, oh, there we go. Even though I am a first year, I was still given input in the lab. And I was kind of trusted to take it serious, of course, and then also apply my own knowledge and sense of critical thinking to the projects we were doing. And then also coordinating with Riley, like problem solving. And um, it allowed us to apply our own individual kind of touch to everything we were doing, which I thought was really cool. And I do really appreciate that from my mentor, like that trust and also giving me that responsibility. So life outside the lab. We had strong meetings every week and community events, which was really cool because you can keep in touch with all the peers here. And um, it was kind of nice to hear about all the interdisciplinary fields that people were working in, learning about the really cool labs, like my roommate was doing mouse dissect. But, but that's just really cool. And um, with those meetings, we also, of course, had a lot of professional development, how to represent ourselves with the portfolios, education, having our meetings, presenting our work. So that just kind of helped bring myself a lot of confidence as a researcher. And then it snowed, and we had a blizzard, so that was kind of really nice, like, 
uh, empty campus everywhere is snow, and then we would go on coffee runs. And um, what was also nice with lab is that we actually didn't have that much homework, which I was super grateful for. Like after <laughs> a long day, you would just come home, and then it's like you can just relax. <laughs> um, and then also, what was crazy, um, I swabbed my dorm vents to look for black mold. I used like a blood plate because that's what fungi grows really well on. And I, no mold grew, but really, really scary stuff. This, this right here is mold from the Barrow's couch. Um, <laughs> but from the storm vents, I actually didn't find any, but like it was like 3D like colonies. It was, it was, it was weird. <laughs> um, so let's talk about some achievements in research and what we have been able to do since the start. So of course, as I've mentioned before, what I thought was really cool to discover is the biodiversity that exists like everywhere. Even though we don't visually see bacteria, it is literally like it makes up everything around us. And it was kind of really crazy going around campus swabbing literally bike racks that probably haven't been touched in five years, but there's still something on that. And it's just really interesting to kind of realize that you could see some of the plates. This was from Stevie Railing, Barrow's Couch, that was a street game where you isolate different colonies. And this is like a this is like this was a fluffy one. <laughs> I thought that was really cool. This was a fluffy one. <laughs> And then also what was nice is to kind of, for lab protocols to become a habit in a sense of like, for example, in a microbiology lab, sterility is super important just because you are working with tiny little bacteria that get everywhere. So that becoming a habit of how to handle equipment, how to execute um, experiments properly, and also the importance of just really being careful. Uh, it was nice that I was noticing that it was kind of becoming a habit and I kind of had a own sense of, this is right, I probably shouldn't do this without having to ask. So that was, that was for me a personal success. And then also what was really nice is how much data we were able to collect. Since we had to do a lot of repetition of experiments, we actually ended up collecting a lot of um, data and also visual representations. We did growth essays, we took a bunch of pictures, and I'm just really excited to move forward in, with this project since that was only three weeks. I'm just imagining what it could be like after committing to a lab for six months. So yeah, here are some takeaways. Um, this is kind of a silly photo. I tried to take a picture through the microscope, but it didn't really work, but I, I, I thought it was cool. Anyways, um, I, what, I, what I never had thought is that using such a small infection model is actually so revolutionary in a sense, because as we have been talking about, like in my seminar, we've been talking about moving away from human experimentation. It was kind of really cool to be looking at infection essays through these little worms that don't feel anything, which is also nice, but it's a real model since these Galeria worms have a very similar immune system. So um, it was just really interesting to kind of compare that to a human immune system and how like really similar it is. And then also the strong community and lab community, um, like I said before, it's just really nice having a community here and knowing everybody, and then also everybody being here from winter term was really nice. Um, the same with my um, lab team. It, like I feel like we grew together like quite well, and I'm also learning together like new things, new techniques, and it was just really awesome with the learning how to properly communicate with not only strong but especially my like lab people and my mentor, of course, and just making those connections. And then also, um, I've genuinely grown a lot more passionate about biology since starting my lab just because I had priorly a focus on chemistry but now I'm actually looking at a major in biology because I just liked it that much and so it's just really cool and I never thought that it would like open an eye like that like having the research experiences is hands-on and something that I couldn't get from a lecture in that sense yeah that's it Not want to touch on campus. <laughs> Barrow's couch. <laughs> Barrow's couch. A uh, Stephen Railing and Barrow's couch. What about the punching bag? The punching bag is also crazy. Yeah. Very crazy. Yeah. We were very surprised. It was kind of nice brainstorming all those locations. Like, what's the nastiest thing we can find? <laughs> I have the opposite question. Was there something you thought was going to be disgusting? Not 
necessarily disgusting, but we actually went to the health of student health and I was super like excited, oh, we're gonna find something, we're gonna find something. But there were a lot of like sterile areas and um, I don't know, what, what, do you, what do you think? Mm -hmm. About like, what, what was like surprisingly clean? Um, I feel like yeah, the student, they were, I think, in fact, I, I'm thinking that the student girls there, the yeah. reception desk was actually not very sterile, which was not very sterile. That was crazy, yeah, but for example, the exam bed, but the was, exam bed was weirdly, weirdly <laughs> clean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. Can I ask another sort of biological question? I'm, I'm curious, like, a lot of these things that you're finding, I imagine, are human related. reaction in a worm whereas in a human that is very very different but still um for example if you go around licking stevie rail that might happen something i don't know but I, there these are tiny worms but it is quite interesting to see how many potentially pathogenic colonies and species species there are out there and especially those that we actually don't understand yet because the bacterial world is so bacterial world is so extensive that there are a lot of species that we have not come to fully understand. And that also we might not have a real way to sterilize against in that sense, especially with like hand sanitizers, alcohol, stuff like that. It's just a lot of things that we don't know yet. So I think that's really interesting to see through the infection model. Fascinating, okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah it's, so <clears throat> it was really interesting to see like the, the way like the melanin was a visible way of seeing mm -hmm. infection, right? Um, is there a way, like I know that's very qualitative, is there a way that you quantify like how dark or, um, you know, does it matter how dark a worm gets versus like can be lighter? Well, know? they can die without getting, without producing melanin, um, which we have seen a few times, so that can be due to wrong injection or something like that. But that's what I think is also interesting because it only produces me uh, melanin in response to um, a pathogen or immune immune reaction. Um, I, there's another project in the lab that I don't know that much about, but they are actually um, with Nikita in our lab. They're currently working on like extracting the hemolymph and looking specifically at the proteins, I believe. Yeah, I'm not really sure though. There are different gradients, but um, you can kind of see on the spine of the worm if it turns brown, you know that it's an immune reaction. But sometimes they just change colors because they get old. If you see like a um, slight discoloration on like the center line, that means that the immune reaction is starting. That's kind of how we were able to tell whether it is just because they're old or because there's actually something happening. Yeah. What do you mean by wrong injection? Like, what is that process? So with those worms, they have like a single vein and then also a single like nervous, I don't know. But um, they also have like a stomach area, like a digestive tract. Mm -hmm. I could imagine if you wrongfully injected into the digestive tract, that can like puncture something or into like the dorsal dorsal vein, right? Uh, we learned this in biology one. <laughs> um, um, if you inject it in there, that could something something could happen. But you're supposed to inject it into this last or second to last le like leg, they have like little legs that you inject it into. So that's like where you should, but people just do it differently. And also what's crazy is if you put them on the syringe and you let go, they start pushing themselves into the syringe, which is crazy. So sometimes that would happen and then you just gotta hope that nothing, too <laughs> <damaged>. <laughs> nothing got too damaged. <laughs> yeah. So like what's the next step? Like if So um, we actually looked at this last week, but we have a microscope with a camera attachment. So the next step for um, me and Riley um, is to actually look at the different samples we have, um, the concentrated samples, so just one species, under that microscope, take pictures, because you can do like snapshots and then compare them visually without having to look through a microscope and like, take notes. 
And then after that, we're going to be working with um, genetic sampling and PCR. I don't know exactly how that works yet, but um, I'm super excited about that part because that's also the combination of biology and biochemistry and looking at the more chemical aspects of things. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's give Julia. Oh, one more Sarah. question. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was your favorite lab to be? Um, worms. That was worms. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like the worms, yeah. <laughs> I was pumping them out. They were, they were just going through the air. Let's give Julia a round of applause. Um, so, right now we have a break until about 1 p.m. Um, for um, where when the the health and cell molecular group will go.